Welcome to the final episode of the DevSpace tutorial series. We will be discussing ways that you can use DevSpace to align across teams and share best practices. Picture this. You are getting a new colleague in your development team. Maybe they're joining from a different team in the same organization. What's one of the first things that this person needs? Probably they want to know how to set up their dev environment so they can be productive. They'll probably want to know how to run and access their application directly or indirectly during runtime. And we've spent the last six episodes automating and defining exactly that in our DevSpace YAML. So if you've been following along, today you can share that file with your colleague, ask them to install DevSpace, and they'll be up and running in no time. So that's onboarding taken care of. Now let's talk best practices. Say you have a bunch of development teams that are all working on their own domains, but everyone's using the same CI/CD pipeline and process, and everyone wants to set up their tests in the same way. So once one team has optimized the test setup flow, everyone else should be able to use that. And that is what DevSpace imports are for. It lets you import a DevSpace YAML from a local path or a remote Git repository, so you can reuse the functions, pipelines, and commands in that shared DevSpace YAML in your own configuration. This way, you can create your very own custom DevSpace library. So whether we're talking testing, using persistent storage, or really anything that can and should be reused, can be thrown into a shared repository's DevSpace YAML and imported into your own configuration. So in this example, I have a shared DevSpace YAML that lives in my project folder. It has a couple of functions and pipelines. And I can, after I've imported this, run the shared pipeline as if it was defined in my own DevSpace configuration. Now, I could just use the tests pipeline of the shared DevSpace YAML the same way that I just showed you with the shared pipeline. But for the sake of this tutorial, I want to do something different. I have a specific setup in my own project's DevSpace YAML that will override the shared tests pipeline. In my project's tests pipeline, I am using the setup tests function that I've just imported from the shared DevSpace YAML. So here you can see that instead of the shared tests pipeline, I'm getting the output of my own project's DevSpace configuration. Other than functions and pipelines, you can also import commands deployments, dev modes, and dependencies. You can see the full list in our docs. In some situations, your service might depend on other services. So if you're using DevSpace across teams and services, you can now reuse them as dependencies. This way, you can provide a standardized way to build and deploy your service to other teams. And this can also be particularly useful if you want to create a multi-step deployment pipeline. So in this example, my service depends on a service named API server. And for the sake of this tutorial, the DevSpace YAML of the API server just lives in my project folder, but you could also specify a remote Git repository here. And we are also specifying the deploy as dependency pipeline here. So every time DevSpace spins up this service as a dependency, it will use the deploy as dependency pipeline of the API service DevSpace YAML. So when we run our deploy pipeline, first we spin up all the dependencies, and then we want to make sure that everything's set up correctly by running our tests. And this is a function that I've imported from the shared library. Only after all the tests have completed will I actually deploy my application. So when would you use dependencies instead of deployments? Well, anytime your service depends on another service at runtime, but you don't want DevSpace to manage that other service's lifecycle, you would add that as a dependency and not as a deployment, especially if the service is being maintained by another team. So DevSpace will check if an application with the given specs already exists on your cluster, and if yes, will not spin up another instance. DevSpace can also handle redundant or circular dependencies, and if you want more information on that, please refer to our documentation. So we covered a lot in this video today, 
but we only scratched the surface. As always, please refer to our docs if you want to learn more about the features that I've mentioned. Also, take a look at our quick start examples to get an idea of how a DevSpace YAML can look like. So this was the DevSpace tutorial. I hope you learned something and now feel equipped to dive into DevSpace and use it for your own projects. If you have any more questions or comments, please join our community on slack.loft.sh where you can chat to users, maintainers, or me. So I hope to see you there soon. Bye.